to part four of our seaplane modeling challenge. Last time we unwrapped our model and we got it into Substance Painter. Let's have a look at, at working with Substance Painter just fairly quickly and getting our results back into Blender. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna head over to Substance Painter and um, since the last video, I've just quickly started to um, pop some texture or some painting onto the surfaces of my model. So we'll just have a quick look at how that works. Um, pretty much what you've got here is, this is obviously your model here, and if you hold down Option and left mouse click, you can find you can rotate the model, you can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel, and um, yeah, and F always centers your model in the window, okay? So you might find that you're sort of like fighting for window space all the time with this um, software. It's a little bit, you know, you can see it's quite dense as far as the menus go. But um, once we get into it, it's fairly simple. We've got over here our layers, and the layers just work pretty much like Photoshop. So um, we've got a base layer um, that comes in with this sort of just basic you know, white clay. Um, and then what I've been doing is just simply creating new layers. So you can create a new layer with this menu system up here. So I'm just going to say, click on a new layer. Okay. And then pretty much apart from that, we've got down in here, we've got lots of different materials. Now, um, probably the ones that you want to use is you're going to find brushes. Obviously, you're going to be wanting to choose brushes to paint onto the surface. So you want to choose a brush, and then over once you've got a brush selected, um, I can select one here. So I might go for something that's a bit, you know, I'll go for say this dirt too, and also we can select a color here. So I've got this set up. I could select, you know say a black and then what I can basically do is once you've got your color selected ditch that um, and we can go in and we can start to work on the model you've got um, pretty much your viewer settings here there's not too much you need to know about but you can change the environments on how they reflect onto the model um, I don't mess around with that too much and um, yeah you can mess around with your brush settings here and you can once you've got it going you can basically just get in and you can paint onto the surface of your model and you can build it up over multiple layers as you go so it's pretty straightforward to work on what i've got i'll just show you what i've done here is i basically got on the base level i've got actually i painted my orange on first so i'll have a look at that first i painted it on the orange just using some big brushes, but I left some uh, plenty of bits like see-through, so I didn't paint them. And then I created a layer underneath, so I just created a new layer, dragged it underneath, and I filled those with just like an aluminium material. And if you go down under materials, you'll find there's lot there's lots to choose from. So anyway, I've got like a painted surface, aluminium showing through the holes. Next level up, I've got some lightweight sort of like um, blacks that um, I've just painted on with some grime and then I've got a bit more where I've painted it a little bit more solidly. Um, you can see here you can adjust the transparency of each layer by dialing this up or down. Um, so I'll just leave all that pretty much as it is at the moment. You can work through and experiment with make, painting your plane. Um, there's plenty of good shoots around on doing it but um, yeah you, you should find it actually really easy. If you use the Photoshop it's, it's good, okay? So anyway, I've got my plane. It's pretty much prepped up and ready to go at the moment. I might put a few decals and grills and things on it to, to tune it up, but I've pretty much got it set up so that if we have a look at it, you can see it's got some bumps and scratches, and paint pulled off on the bottom there. We've got some sort of black on the nose and uh, where the motors are gonna go on the wings there. I've got some sort of like oil streaks and stuff. And I've got a bit of grunge, you know, between the, that might be a bit hard to clean on these on the tails and you know might pick up some smoke from the motors and things like that so i think that we're pretty uh you know we're in the zone i think as far as um getting this you know looking okay um but it, yeah I, it could do with more detail if you have a look at the plane they've often got lots of do not step and 
don't get sucked into the motor stickers and things like that um, for, you know, different safety reasons, obviously. You don't want to get sucked into a motor. That would be bad. Um, but let's just move on, and we're going to export the textures, okay? So once you're ready, you can export your textures, give them a name, and what it will do is it will export um, a, uh, a bunch of textures which control the look of the surface. So it will export not just the um, the matte or gloss surfaces, but also the bump mapping and you know quite a few different things. Okay, so that's cool. Go ahead and export that, and um, then all it's got to do really is move back into Blender, and I've got my model set up. Now I've just got a real basic gloss material on it at the moment sitting there, and uh, we don't. You can see that it looks really sort of artificial and weird having you know a uh, a surface that's got no uh, scratches or anything, you know, any sort of damage or wear and tear on it. So what we'll do is um, we'll give this a bit of a tuner. So down the bottom here, I've got my UV image editor open. Okay, so you can repurpose this window at any time, just like the other one. So click on this UV image editor. That's cool, and it's showing us. Because I'm actually, let me go to solid mode, I'm actually in edit mode for my aircraft and I've got the whole, all the mesh selected. So I always think of selecting mesh A for all or nothing. Um, works for me. Okay, so we need to bring in some of those texture maps that we've started to paint, that we painted up in Substance Painter. You can do this multiple times. So you can sort of see how it looks if you're wanting your model in Blender. Then you can paint it a bit more in substance paint and you know keep tuning it up if you want to. Um, you don't have to just do one pass through with this. Okay, so let's just add in a new image. Actually, that's wrong. We're going to open the image instead. Um, and I'm just going to find seaplane textures, which is what I called it. And we're just going to go for the basic one at the moment, which is the diffuse. But you can see here we've got probably won't be any emissive on this because um, that's more for lights that are glowing and things like that. But we've got a map for the glossiness, height map, normal map, and a specular map. Okay, So especially the glossiness map's a good one, but we'll deal just with the diffuse for starters. So I select that, open image, okay, and um, it comes in. Now if I zoom out, you can see that this is actually the, uh, the painting that we've done in um, Substance Painter, all stretched out, and it fits straight onto our mesh okay so one of the reasons we don't want to adjust our model um, now that we're into this because if we add more detail it'll mess up the mesh and it won't necessarily fit over the top of this it's okay to add extra stuff outside of object once you're in object mode you can add extra objects but don't mess around with the mesh inside edit mode if you can help it okay because it gets a bit dangerous right so we've got that set up that's cool but let's um, have a look here and we'll see that the texture isn't applied to the surface yet. So we need to get a little bit more um, into the materials to get that happening. So what we're going to do is head into the nodes editor. And node editor in Blender, fantastic. I think it's really good. Okay, a couple of tricks. Sometimes you might open it and you might be set on world, um, especially in the file that I've set up. And in that, it'll, you'll see environment texture background and world so that's mapping an image onto the world and that's what we can see in the background that sort of like you know the sky and the water um okay so we don't want that what we want is to come down to this cube and this shows us um and we have to have our object selected it shows us the material that's working on our object and if we look over here in our material panel as well we've sort of got two control panels on the go at the same, same time. Um, it's telling us here that we've got a glossy BSDF material and um, that's what's on the model and you know we don't really want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in the new principled BSDF shader, which is uh, newish in Blender and uh, is the go, okay? So I recommend that you use this as much as possible because it's a ripper. Okay, and you can see that um, it's got, so it's, you know, it gives us PBR rendering if you're a fan of that sort of action. It's the current trend in, um, you know, in 3D software. 
But we can see down here it's got all these settings and we can basically run you know our texture maps we've created straight into all of this. But we're going to do your basic um, bit of action at the moment. We're going to add an image texture, I'm going to jam it up there, and I'm going to link this to the base color. So you can see up the top here, it's got a base white on it at the moment, and it turns this um, magenta color. So when we see things in Blender and they typically turn this magenta color, it often means that there's an image missing, and uh, it's just kind of like a visual warning to say, hey, you know, hook up this texture, which is what we're going to do. So we've already got that texture map loaded into um, Blender. We did that in the UV editor, so the software will know about it. So if we click in this little tab on the side here, we can go Cplane start file, yo, and um, there it is, okay? We've got our Cplane start file and it's up and running. And you can see that now we've got some of our various sort of types of grunge on the plane. And uh, if we look underneath here, we can see, you know, it's looking good. Okay, it is a bit high on the glossy side at the moment. We'll tune that out as we go along. But for the moment, it's, um, yeah, it's pretty good, okay? We, um, yeah. We're on our way. So, um, we've got our, um, at this point, we've got our plane looking okay. I've got a canopy on the top there, needs a bit of a tune up. And um, yeah, I think we'll leave that video for the moment. I think there's plenty um, to work on for you in that at the moment. Uh, some things that I haven't done on the model yet, I haven't added like details for like aerolines and flaps and rudders and all, where all those sorts of control surfaces would be in on the plane. That's something I may model it in or I may just paint it onto the surface. I haven't really decided yet. But um, yeah, we're looking pretty good, okay? So we'll run through the in the next video. We'll have a look at refining things a bit more, adding a bit more um, detail to our painted objects but um, adding in some propellers, etc. But I think um, if you're up to this point, you're doing well and you're not too far away from having you know, something that you can start to render up and should start to look pretty decent. Okay, so thanks for now.